Uh, hello, my name is Matthew, and I'm reading Don Quixote by Cervantes. And I'm, at, I'm going into work uh, a little bit later today, and I wasn't planning on making a video or anything. I just sat down to enjoy my book, and I came across a passage that had me rolling, laughing out loud, having to look away from the text, having such a good time. And every time I read this, it's such a joyful experience. Cervantes is just a wonderful storyteller, very companionable, and the, the characters are so rich and vibrant. Uh, I make a point to say how funny the book is, which does it a slight disservice because of um, how, how rich and multifaceted um, the human condition is um, shown on, on these pages, but it's funny. This is one of the funniest books, and <laughs> I'm often just smiling, uh, big big stupid grin on my face as I'm as I'm reading this and I, I want to read um, a, f a fairly long passage or I want to read a passage in a moment uh, that that had me rolling just <laughs> uh, to give you a little forewarning I, I do have to do a little bit of um, uh, background just to get us uh, up to speed um, I think we're on books two or three I, I forget now but uh, Don Quixote and uh, his his squire uh, Sancho Panza are now just continuing on their mi misadventures, and there's <laughs> there's a point where uh, Sancho decides to to leave the horse. Uh, the horse's name is uh, Ron Finante. Uh That's Don Quixote's uh, gentle steed, and uh, Sancho believed that the the horse was so. Uh, meek and mild uh, and mature, he didn't have to tie the horse up, and so th he's doing other things. The horse is left unattended, and Rathanante uh, sees in his pasture um, these Galician ponies and shepherds, and Rathanante decides um, on his own. The horse decides to run over and play with and pester the other ponies and um, they, they take uh, they take this badly and the ponies start fighting with the horse the shepherds come over and start uh, beating with with uh, staffs they're beating Rathanante it's tragic um, till, till the poor horse is just on on the ground Don Quixote and Sancho see this and Don Quixote says Okay, we're gonna run over and battle these shepherds. And Sancho says, "There's like fifty of these shepherds with with staffs." And Don Quixote says, uh, "I'm worth a <laughs> hundred. So they they run over. Don Quixote has his sword, and the two of them, Don Quixote and Sancho, just get beaten to a pulp, violently beaten to the ground. These shepherds uh, just whacking them on the head, breaking their heads, hitting them on the jaw, uh, leaving them just bruised and battered and, and beaten. And Don, Don Quixote and Sancho and the horse are all just lying, lying there. The shepherds and the ponies take off. And this is this great absurd exchange. While they're lying there, half dead, they have this long conversation before they even get they can't they can't get up. <laughs> Don Quixote's got like broken broken ribs and his head's all busted in. Sancho's in the worst condition. And they're talking about knighthood and chivalry and all of the great adventures that they're gonna have, and of course they're gonna be suffering misfortunes. Sancho is kind of searching for an, an explanation because so far all they do is get beaten to a pulp. Don Quixote is talking about this magical potion. It's come up a few times. He has this elixir that he can make 
that is so powerful that even if his body was cut in half, you could just put the two halves back together, pour the potion down his gullet, and he'd be magically restored. And so they're lying there, half dead, and Sancho says, how about we drink that potion? Don Quixote says, well, we, we, have, to, we have to make the potion. We need to get certain uh, elixirs and uh, special herbs, and there's enchantments, uh, but we'll, we'll recover from this, and I'll make that potion, and we'll always be fine. So Sancho manages to get Don Quixote uh, slumped over the mule. And it's a pitiful sight where Sancho is pulling the mule, which is carrying Don Quixote, and then uh, followed by Rathanante. They go to an inn, which of course Don Quixote believes is a magical castle where there's uh, princes and princesses and uh, kings and barons and fine ladies and all of that nonsense. Sancho brings uh, Don Quixote in and says, you know, he, he's been injured, um, he took a fall, so <laughs> Sancho is lying for Don Quixote. And there, there's mule drivers there, there's other lodgers, there's the innkeeper, um, there's a, a, a housemaid that begins to take care of uh, Don Quixote and also Sancho, they're just lying in these beds, and Don Quixote gets it in his head, he gets confused that the woman that's attending to him, attending to his wounds, um, is, is actually falling for him, and is having these like romantic overtures, and uh, this puts Don Quixote in a dilemma, because he has uh, his own lady that he loves. It's uh, Dulciana, I believe. I don't. I have to practice my pronunciation. So he decides. Um, they're 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 both still recovering. He decides that he needs to ward off this woman. She comes in to check on him. He pulls her. It's like the middle of the night. He's a stranger in 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 just uh, a remote inn. It's the middle of the night. He's in bed. He pulls her down into the bed. He has her by the wrists and then starts talking all of this very strange, talking in a very strange way about how she's this beauteous lady and uh, how she's magnificent. He's trying to get to the point that he's already in love with someone else. She is uh, obviously misunderstanding all of these signals. She, she believes that she's um, being threatened. And <laughs> this is just, right after he's gotten uh, beaten by these shepherds, uh, she tries to get away. The, the, the house becomes um, full of alarm and a full-blown fist fight breaks out. Sancho is just wildly throwing punches He's beating up the girl. Other people are jumping in. And I'm going to read this passage. This wasn't the passage that had me rolling, but they all just get in this huge scuffle. And let me see. Did I... I hope I have it. Uh, yeah. The innkeeper also approached, but with a different purpose, because he went to her to punish the girl believing, no doubt, that she alone was the reason for so much harmony. And as the old saying goes, the, ca the cat chased the rat, the rat chased the rope, the rope chased the stick, the mule driver hit Sancho, Sancho hit the girl, the girl hit Sancho, the innkeeper hit the girl, and all of them acted so fast and furiously that they did not let up for an instant. Then, the best part was that the innkeeper's lamp went out, and since they were in darkness, everyone hit everyone with so little mercy that whenever their hands landed, they left nothing whole and sound. They're all beating the hell out of each other. This is Don Quixote and Sancho trying to recover from serious injuries that they've just incurred. So now, they're even... 
they're even worse, even more worse off than they were before they got to the inn. And so they're, they're, they're allowed to stay. Other, other things happen, but uh, Don Quixote asks the innkeeper um, for a list of ingredients, and it's going to be the, the, the herbs and liquids and uh, his spiced concoction. So, so he can make it and um, cure himself and uh, presumably cure Sancho as well. Now I'm going to read another passage. Um, <laughs> I'll see how I get through this. So the, Don Quixote uh, made his potion. That, that's where we are. Beaten to a pulp. <laughs> okay. In short, he took his simples and made a compound of them, mixing them all together and cooking them for a while until it seemed to him they were ready. Then he asked for a flask to pour the potion into. But since there was none in the inn, he decided to put it into a cruet or oil container made of tin plate, which the innkeeper gave to him at no charge. Then, over the cruet, he said more than eighty pater nosters and an equal number of Ava Maries, salves, and credos, and he accompanied each word with the sign of the cross and a kind of blessing, all of which was witnessed by Sancho, the innkeeper, and the officer. The mule driver, in the meantime, had, quiet, had quietly gone out to tend to his animals. So he's made the potion. <laughs> Having completed this, Don Quixote himself wanted to test the virtue of what he imagined to be the precious balm, and so he drank it down, and the portion that could not fit into the cruet was left in the pot where it had cooked, where it had cooked amounted almost to a liter. As soon as he finished drinking it, he began to vomit until nothing was left in his stomach. And with the nausea and agitation of vomiting, he broke into a copious sweat, for which reason he ordered them to wrap him up well and leave him alone. This they did, and he slept for more than three hours. And when he woke, his body felt much relieved and so much better after his beating that he considered himself cured. <laughs> he truly believed he had found the balm of fire a brass, and that with this remedy he could from now on, and with no fear whatsoever, engage in any combat, battle, or contest, no matter how perilous it might be. Sancho Panza also deemed the improvement in his master a miracle, requested the, the, the portion that remained in the pot, which was no small quantity. Don Quixote agreed, and Sancho picked up the pot in both hands, and with a good amount of trust and even greater optimism, he gulped down, <laughs> gulped down thirstily, swallowing only a little less than his master had. It seems, however, that poor Sancho's stomach was not as delicate as his master's, and so, <laughs> before he vomited, <laughs> he endured so much nausea and felt so sick to his stomach, and sweated so much, and felt so faint, that he really and truly thought it was his final hour. And finding himself in so much pain and anguish, he cursed the balm, and the villain who had given it to him. Seeing him in this state, Don Quixote said, I believe, Sancho, that this affliction has befallen you because you have not been dubbed a knight. For I am of the opinion that this potion is not suitable for those who are not knights. <laughs> Sancho, curse me and all of my kin. If your grace knew that, replied Sancho, why did you let me taste it? At this point, the concoction took effect, <laughs> and the poor squire began to erupt from both channels, and with so much force that the reed mat on which he lay and the canvas blanket that covered him could not be used again. He was perspiring and sweating and suffering such paroxysms and mishaps that oh, not only uh, he, but everyone else thought his life was coming to an end. 
This tempest of affliction lasted almost two hours, at the end of which he was not <laughs> left he was left not as his master had been, but so bruised and battered he could barely stand. <laughs> Amazing. Um, <laughs> I just I just wanted to share that. I, I, I was just reading it and gosh so fun um I, i'm i'm <laughs> i hope you enjoyed that I'll, I'll, I'll just i'll just say that i'm having a great time with uh, don quixote uh let me know if you're, if you're reading it let me know um what you think of that passage so thank you for watching and um, please leave a comment if you would like and take take care